Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are going over this firearm right here. As of when I'm recording this, I actually haven't shot it yet. We're gonna head to the range tomorrow and meet you guys out there later on in the video. But I did wanna get some footage out here on the dock because it's a lovely evening, but what is it? It's a Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter, which we've talked about previously here on the channel. We have a review of this guy up, which is again, Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 10 millimeter, but this is the Performance Center version. So it changes some things from it. Still uses the same standard capacity 15 round magazines and Smith & Wesson mag followers are uh, color coordinated by uh, caliber, if you didn't know that. So yellow is 10 millimeter. Um, it has our standard M&P 2.0 grip frame, obviously the large one that is the one they use for the 45s and the 10 millimeters to accommodate the cartridge size. Um, but the big difference on it is going to be a couple things. Number one, performance center trigger, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then it has this 5.6 inch barrel, but it has some interesting things going on with the barrel itself. So you guys can take a look and see that we do have porting there on the top, which correlates to the ports on the slide. There is nothing on the sides, although it is hollowed out. I would imagine that's just to kind of keep the balance of this slide the same. It's optics cut, as you guys can see. So we have the Trigicon SRO on there. And then additionally, unlike the old, all right, which I guess is probably still current production, M&P 10 millimeter. This one has True Glow, True Pro night sights on there, and they are suppressor height or optics height, depending on what you guys want to call them. So basically, there are the ports right there in the barrel. So we'll walk you through some of the features, like I said, here out on the dock, and then we're going to head out to the range and test the reliability. You guys may have already seen some shooting footage, depending on how I edit this thing. Um, but one thing that just right off the bat I don't like, but this may change down the road, the only version they have uh, right now has this ambidextrous thumb safety on it. Um, so again, that may change down the road. I'm not sure on that, but right now that's all they have. And for a thumb safety, it's very good. So I'm not mad about that. Um, but I just, me personally, on a striker fire gun, I don't like thumb safeties. But you guys may love it. So if that's you, cool. Um, but what we'll talk about here, of course, is the back straps are interchangeable. So we'll just work sort of this way on the pistol going over the details for the new folks here. This is a tool that can allow you to take the pistol down without actually pressing the trigger and we have full videos on that if you guys are interested in it but it does come with four different back straps if i can pull this one out here so we have the medium large one on there and the grip texture on these is fantastic so you can change it to fit your hands i have pretty large hands uh, so i have the medium large one on there it fits well for me and then you just push that back in turn it and then you're good and you can attach a lanyard if you are like an army officer for example and you guys like lanyards but grip texture on there is fantastic it has that natural grip angle 1911 grip angle uh, that a lot of folks do like the beaver tail there is built into the back strap if you go with the medium large or the large so you get nice and high on it which is very important for any gun but especially one in 10 millimeter like i said we'll start shooting it here a little bit later in the video but should help tame the recoil the recoil on the previous one definitely not terrible for a 10 millimeter of course everything is relative there if we're talking about 10 millimeter so we do have our ambidextrous slide stop and a uh, slide release there smith and wesson really does this right on their 2.0s they've been doing it phenomenally for years now uh, they changed it from the original ones and uh, basically it's a little bit larger it has good serrations on both sides of it and uh, basically it gives you a good area to hit and allow you to send it home, but you have to push on it, right? So you're not gonna accidentally bump it. What I like about that is versus the first generation MNPs, some of the early ones, you could bump with your hand kind of easy if you're shooting high thumb grip. Additionally, uh, if you had the slide back and you just put a mag in, a lot of times it would auto forward with these ones. You definitely have to hit it or come up like that with your support hand. And I do like that. I like it a little bit harder. Obviously, of course, you could always just rack it and send the slide home. Uh, but continuing on forward, we do have that performance header trigger like we just talked about. And so how does that look? Well, we have this little trigger safety on there and it has the over travel stop that is built into the frame itself. And basically the trigger press will walk over here and kind of ghost it, get you guys the lake in the background so you can see it. And that's our take up. That's our wall and the brake. For a striker fire gun, it is a pretty clean brake. And the reset, right there. It is tactile, it is audible. I'm not sure if my lavalier mic will pick it up, but again, we're back at the wall. And brake. 
and reset right there. Compared to a lot of the earlier M&Ps, it's definitely an improvement in my opinion. Is it the latest, greatest trigger out there for strike fire guns? No. Is it very good? Yes. <laughs> so there is that. Uh, trigger guard on there is slightly enlarged, which probably is more important on the 10 millimeters than it is for some of the other calibers, as I would imagine. A lot of folks will be using this in cold climates, especially after the M&P performance in Grand Thumbs video in the cold. People tend to think these are awesome for that now. Um, and I think a lot of people, 10 millimeter for large game defense, things like that, will be looking at that. So shooting it with gloves on certainly could be a possibility. We do have a 1913 rail out there on the front. We've attached a Surefire light and it goes on there just fine. Obviously, continuing on forward, the slide does have that nitrocarburized, melanated, whatever you want to call it, finish on there. So good uh, matte finish on there. It's not really reflective, it's not shiny. But what it's doing is giving you good surface hardness, good corrosion resistance, and good lubricity, which certainly is nice. And again, we can verify that we are unloaded. And you can take it down by either hitting this takedown lever here and sending it home, pressing the trigger, which is what we are going to do. Or there is a sear disconnect, which is that little yellow piece in there that you can push forward. And that way you don't have to press the trigger. But looking in there, you can see good fit and finish on everything in the actual frame. We do have a stainless steel guide rod and spring, which I know a lot of folks like. It does have a uh, key out there on the end, so you can disassemble it and change the spring out, which I'm sure Smith & Wesson says not to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I know a 10 millimeter, a lot of guys like to tune their springs to their loads, so it does allow you to do that. Once again, we have that Armornite Melanite finish on there on the barrel. Interestingly, on the barrel, so while it says it's 5.6, which it is, the actual rifling only comes out to right about here on the barrel itself, and the last probably half inch of the barrel where the ports are is actually not rifled. Now, my guess is the reason they did that is if you look at some of the ported guns out there on the market, you'll hear complaints that a lot of guys shooting them uh, when they're up close and personal on a target, you can get pieces of the bullet jacket coming back and hitting them in the face, the spall coming off of it. I'm guessing that's why they stopped the rifling a little bit short, but it's an interesting note that I didn't notice until I looked at it closely, but looking in the slide, you'll see, again, fantastic machine work, which is exactly what you'd expect from Smith & Wesson. And the reassembly is the exact same in the opposite order. One thing I didn't mention that I can while we're reassembling it is the weight. So this is a big gun. It's not a small gun. And for a polymer frame gun, it's relatively heavy with a magazine on there. In it, unloaded, it comes in at 35 ounces on my scale. I think it was like 34.8 ounces, so basically 35 ounces. And then, of course, you can add your optic light, and the weight goes up. And, of course, that 10 millimeter ammo makes the makes it go up as well. It does have the core optics mounting system. And one thing I like about the M&Ps versus some of the competitive options is it comes with all the plates. So a lot of the optics companies, or rather uh, firearms companies, make you order the optics plate from them for your specific optic. This one comes with all of them. I do dig that. So that is the basic overview of the gun. Now let's head out to the range and see how this thing shoots. We brought a few different loads out. This one here, some 200 grain PMC. There's one in the tube. The SRO is mechanically zeroed, so it should be close-ish. And we got some shoot steel down range. Let's, let's see how she does. That's not a good start. <laughs> I should note there was 15 in the mag, which definitely sometimes on some guns can cause issues, but it looks like we had a failure to feed. Not a good start, let's keep going. It does not want to go in there. Maybe it just doesn't like that ammo. I don't know. Maybe it's just that round. I don't know. The round looks fine. Let's try another one. Different magazines, still PMC, just because I preloaded all the mags before coming out here, so. It does not want to feed that PMC load at all. I have no idea why that is. We ran this in my other MNP 10 and it ran fine. Let's see. Same thing. It is not chambering it. Now we have some 180 grain Remington loaded up and we'll see how that does. Chambered it.
Well, it ran that just fine. I wonder if there's just an issue with the PMC. Regardless, we will keep going. Now that we have it running with the Remington, I want to try to test out the porting and see how that works versus the standard one. Uh, Remington 180 in there, and we'll see how it does. I'm running the camera on slow-mo as well, so you guys should see that right after this. All right, let's grab the other one. Same ammo, non-ported, MNP-10. All right, so from a shooter's perspective, it's definitely uh, less punchy with that ported barrel, for sure. Not sure how it looks on slow-mo, but uh, shooting it, you definitely have less impulse coming at you and a little bit less flip as well. So it seems the ported barrel works. Earlier on the dock, we mentioned that some folks like to change out the weight of their springs in 10 millimeter because there's just such a wide variety of power ammo out there. So we're a little hotter on this one, double tap. These ones are rated for, I believe, 1475 and uh, 150 grain projectile hollow points. We'll see how this one handles it. Probably a little spicier than that Remington. No doubt, <laughs> spicier than that Remington. Another hotter load from Double Tap, 180 grain coming at 1250 feet per second. So we'll see how that does with the spice. That one a little bit lighter, but those things will give you arthritis, kids. Now we're gonna see if it's gonna run 40 Smith & Wesson, some 10 mils will, most of them will. And uh, we have it loaded up with some 180 grain cellar and bellet, and we'll see. That's so much lighter shooting than the 10 mil stuff we've had out here today, it's crazy. So it definitely runs it. I would say the ejection's about a quarter of what it is with the uh, those double tap loads we've been running all day. Alrighty folks, we are all through with the shooting portion of the video. We brought out 500 rounds to put through it. 100 rounds was that PMC, so that didn't happen. But we finished the other 400 rounds and it ate literally everything we put through it with the exception of that PMC. I don't know why it didn't like the PMC, but it didn't, I have no idea. Um, regardless, everything else was just fine. Shooting characteristics of it are basically what you'd expect. Like I said, unloaded, I think it's 31 ounces with the mag, I think it's 34. And uh, 10 millimeter ported gun with the uh, polymer frame, that's gonna give you some flex to help absorb the recoil, but no doubt about it. I mean, you wouldn't want to shoot like 2000 rounds in one day with it. It would definitely be uh, a little bit punishing for your grip. My hand is, is doing okay. It's a little bit red, but otherwise good. It soaks it up well. Like I said, that porting does seem to help with the actual impulse for sure. And uh, we already went over most of the other features. So again, outside of the PMC, it ran everything 100%. And I know some of the M&Ps uh, 10 millimeters had some problems with some of the hotter stuff, but uh, we put 200 rounds of that double tap through it, 100 rounds of each load. And no problems at all so there is that if you guys have any questions anything like that about the gun that we didn't already answer definitely post them down below in the comment section you can also post those over at my various social media sites that you guys see here on your screen if you're not following me on those places i definitely recommend you do so this gun obviously was sent out to us for the review by the folks at smith and wesson um, which is why i'm able to get it to you guys the first day it was announced so i appreciate them sending it out for the review that said, when these go in stock, we will throw it up on my uh, social media first. And then after that, it will go in my daily deals email. You guys can sign up for that at the website here on your screen. That slide is hot. You guys can sign up for that at the uh, website here on your screen. It goes out every day as the name indicates. And if it's in that email, it's the cheapest that item is um, that I've seen on the internet on that particular day. So ammo, accessories, lights, optics, pistols, whatever the case may be, it's in there. It's the cheapest I know of on that particular day. And then if you guys like this type of video and you're not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button if you've already done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week. You sign up for the email at the website here on your screen. This one goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's uh, email went out. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content, because that does tend to happen. For both of those emails, I do recommend that you guys use a non-Gmail email. It seems to have a much higher delivery rate for both of them. So there is that. 
I think that's it. We're going to close the video out. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to do this without each and every one of you. So I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.